Hey everyone, it's Karen. So it's official now. My birthday was yesterday, which means that the start of a year of reading one's own is here and I'm not allowed to buy any books. So today what I wanted to do is give you a kind of a haul of what I got for my birthday, as well as showing you kind of an unboxing of some of the books that I bought at the last minute because I was freaking out about the fact that I could not buy books for one year. So first, let's start with my uh, birthday books. Um, I have The Irrational Season, which is by Madeline LaEngle. I have been obsessed with her this summer. I knew that she wrote A Wrinkle in Time, but when I learned more about her as a person and about her religious beliefs and things, um, I definitely have fallen more and more in love with her. So this is the third book in the Crosswicks series. And um, basically these are memoirs based on her journals and they just really go into like what was family life like for her? Uh, what are her views on faith? What does she do when she's stressed? Just like different things um, are in these and it really has made me feel so connected to her. I just love these so much. So I um, own the first and second, which I've already read both of those. I own the fourth, but I haven't read it yet. And now I have the third. So I have all of them now and I'm so excited to read them during this year of reading one's own. Um, the next book that my brother and sister-in-law gave me, which all of these are from them, is again Madeline Lingle. This is uh, Reflections on a Writing Life. So this is her like writing advice and just I'm not sure I haven't looked at it, but I I believe that it's kind of background information on her writing process and just a discussion of writing and art and how that connects to her faith and spirituality and all those things. So I'm excited to read this. And then finally, uh, my brother and sister-in-law got me this one, which was recommended on a midrash like recommendations video that jason did on his channel which i'll link below um but secrets in the dark when he talked about this book i wanted it so badly um this is a life in sermons it's by frederick buchner i'm not sure how to say this last name and i don't know i did not research any background information about him i don't know his religious background or what denomination he belongs to i do know he's christian um and this book is just a bunch of essays that he has written. I'm really excited to dig into this. This will probably be a kind of slow paced read, you know, a sermon a day or so kind of a book, but I'm looking forward to it so much. These are the three that my brother and sister-in-law got me for my birthday. And then, like I said, oh my gosh, it was almost like, I kind of feel like this was like Fat Tuesday or something. Like it was just like at the last it was, well, maybe it was like Fat Monday actually because I started on Tuesday, which was my birthday, but I just like, I was really stressing out Monday night at 11 p.m. because I was like, I have one hour left that I could buy books. I ended up not buying anything, but anyway, I just felt this need to kind of like stock up because I will not be buying them for a year. So I have lots of packages. We can pretend that they're not from here because I prefer to support more independent booksellers. But here's the first one. All right. So the first book I got was Five Lives Remembered. This is by Dolores Cannon, who is super controversial and has a lot of crazy ideas about um, life and things like that. However, when I um, have actually read one of her other books, I felt so ridiculous uh, really enjoying it. But I felt that so much of what she said, even if you, look, if you look at what she's saying, it sounds crazy. But when you look at the details of it, a lot of what she's saying makes sense to my beliefs. If you can get past some of the language that could just not it could kind of rub you the wrong way some of the words she uh, uses don't always have the most positive connotation i would say so anyway this is the first one that she has ever written it wasn't published first but it was the first one she's written so i'm excited to kind of start from the beginning and see kind of how her thought process goes and then it's funny that these are boxed together because this is kind of like spiritual too but on the other end of the spectrum 
Uh, this was recommended by my priest. It's how to read the Bible book by book. Um, I started a Bible study online and the last time we talked about how to read the Hebrew Bible and the different methods that you could use, the more helpful methods to read the Bible and the less helpful ones. And one of the methods that I really feel connected to is the historical approach because I am really curious about what was life like for people when this was written and what are some of the things that I might not understand because I'm coming from 2020 that people of that time would understand more. Um, I feel like I miss some of the meanings of Bible passages sometimes by not understanding the historical approach. And so I asked for what is a resource that I could use that would kind of give me that background information and this was recommended to me. Again, I don't believe that his uh, denomination matches mine as far as uh, Christianity. However, um, he is a Christian and what my priest said was that when you get to actual biblical research, um, these, these scholars tend to kind of align themselves and play nicely even if their personal beliefs differ. So. Um, how to read the Bible book by book. All right, done with one package. Oh my gosh, so many of these. Okay, here's the next one. Okay, the next book is Tinkers, which has won the Pulitzer. I don't remember what year, but in the past few years. Um, Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading kind of inspired me to think about running through the whole Pulitzer Prize winners for fiction and reading that whole list. Now that's not going to be a one year thing by any means and um, I own many of the Pulitzer Prize winning books but I by no means own anywhere close to the whole list. So I'm going to get through some this year um, but not many. Here's the only thing I know about this. I know nothing what it's about. I don't really care but what I do know is that Marilyn Robinson blurbed it. So I'm hoping this will be a good book. <laughs> I have high hopes. Um, the next book I got was another Madeline Langle. Guys, I'm obsessed. This was, um, this is sold into Egypt. She has a series of books where she walks you through Genesis. And I believe this is the second book. So I, a while ago, purchased the first book. I'm reading it now. It is amazing. <sighs> Like I just, I, it's a book you, ha I always read it with a pen, but this is a book you have to read with a pen. I'm literally underlining everything. It's a book I'll read over and over again. Um, that's the first one. This is the second. And then in one of these boxes and packages, there should be the third book as well. So, all right, on to our next package. Wolf Hall. I've heard about this long before it's been hyped recently. I believe that Ann Pacha actually initially told me about it. Um, I have been learning more about Episcopalians and so I'm interested if this will cover any of the history regarding that. Um, but Wolf Hall, if you haven't heard, is basically about King Henry VIII and about his many wives. And so I believe this starts with the first wife and with him trying to divorce her. But we'll see, I don't really know much more than that. And the next book by Madeline Langle. This is again um, book three of the Genesis series that I already mentioned. And one last box. And the last box was granola bars. So apparently that's all the books that I bought. Um, so that is all. I hope you guys enjoyed my Fat Tuesday book haul and unboxing. I am so excited for a year of readings one, one's own and I'm excited that it finally started. I am curious what books in your collection you are anxious to read and if any of you have tried some variation of this a year of reading one's own. I will see you guys later. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.